What's up, guys? Welcome to another Top 5. Now, when we're talking about technology, you either fall on two sides of the spectrum. Either the future's looking really bright, or we're going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, I guess you can fall down the middle line of we're doing just fine and you love technology. Well, today we're going to discuss the top five technologies that are going to change the world. Here we go. Let's get right into it. Number five, augmented reality. Now, not to be confused with virtual reality, augmented reality is an interactive experience that combines like real world and computer generated content. Virtual reality is all computer generated content. Um, it includes like multiple sensory mo modalities, uh, haptic, auditory, uh, visual, right? That just layman's terms means, you know, sight, sounds, and touch. Um, they are working on smell. Now, once they get that thing done, I'm watching every cooking show imaginable. Um, hopefully I can go back and catch the old em Emerald ones. Bam! Anyway, that guy was great. But if you guys do remember, Pokemon Go. Yeah, you remember that one? That was an augmented reality game that, that was downloaded to the tune of one billion times uh, thus far. It came out in 2016. They had people riding around in golf courts and riding all over the place trying to catch a little Pokemon in, in real life, um, looking through their screen. Now, think about this. If Pokemon Go was the beginning of augmented reality, I would equate, equate that to dial-up internet, right? You know, AOL dial-up internet. Yeah, that's what Pokemon Go was, and people loved it, clearly. People are still playing it. Um, we're going to get so far from that and so far into the, 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 uh, the modes of this thing, it's going to be insane. Now, to point out one thing um, that I think is, is fascinating, it's Apple who are coming out with their own glasses, and I'm sure multiple companies are working on their own form of this type of uh, technology. But Apple Glass is coming out with their own uh, form of augmented reality glasses, where obviously you can read your emails and text messages, you can use the maps, you know, tell you exactly where to go on the map, or in your glasses. But the most amazing thing I've seen, most amazing feature I've seen, was they have a patent to where you don't have to get prescription glasses anymore. <laughs> it has some type of sub-assembly in inside the glasses, they say, that's going to correct anybody's vision. So um, lens crafters and all of them people that, that make prescription glasses, yeah, you guys are out of a job. Um, lucky, luckily for you, I think it's not slated to come out until 2025, so you, you better get to uh, uh, selling more glasses, I'll tell you that much, because they're gonna put a lot of people out of business but augmented reality, the possibilities are endless. Um, I even seen a function where imagine you being a, a warehouse worker. Let's say you work at Amazon. You work at Amazon in the warehouse. The glasses will tell you where the product is, how to box the product, and everything. And it just it has multiple uh, functions to it. Imagine being a mechanic, having these glasses on, diagnosing the problem of the engine, and it's showing you how to fix the problem through the glasses. So I think um, the more and more we go around with this technology, the bigger it's going to get, it's really going to change the world. And we haven't even scratched the surface yet. You guys are going crazy over Pokemon balls. Watch when we, when we really get into this thing. Moving along. Number four, conversational AI. Now, this type of AI gives us the ability to uh, conversate or interact with artificial intelligence the way you would with humans. Um, now, we've had chatbots in the past. But those chatbots are only programmed to answer specific questions. So if you go off script, that chatbot doesn't know how to answer those questions. Conversational AI will be able to interact with you on a more human level. And the more you use it, the more it learns, the easier it is to communicate with you. So it will have the ability to analyze human speech and it knows exactly what you're saying, what you're trying to ask and gives you the appropriate answers. And like I said, it's constantly learning. So it will get better and better. Um, there are many ways that this is going to disrupt um, the future for us. Um, it's too many to name, but I'm going to name the top ones I think that's the most pertinent, starting with this one. Healthcare. It's going to allow patients to describe their symptoms to you that the AI bot over the phone and be able to diagnose you to reduce wait times of trying to wait for somebody, a nurse or a doctor to hear you out. They're going to be able to diagnose what you're saying through 
what your the questions they're asking. Like I said, it's not going to be a traditional your, your chat bots where you're putting in and they have prefixed answer. This thing's going to know exactly what's going on with you. Number three, in home health diagnostics. Now, this is going to democratize the game for everybody. Long gone are going to be the days of you sitting in a, in a waiting room or emergency room. Well, then again, emergency rooms, yes. But waiting rooms, if you got a cold, you got strep throat, anything like that, that's going to be a thing in the past. There's going to be devices that can diagnose you. Telehealth is going to be huge. Like I said, it's going to give more affordable health care to many more Americans and democratize health in general. Um, like I said, you're not going to have to go to a doctor's office and wait six hours for a bunch of people to, to give you a script, right? You're going to be diagnosed from your home. They're going to be equipment that they send to your home that's going to be able to check your, your heart rate, your pulse, whether you got a temperature, any, uh, any uh, uh, bacterial infections, all of that stuff, and even be able to prescribe prescriptions to you right on the spot. Right. So imagine sitting at home, your kid's sick. You don't want to bring your sick kid to the doctor and sit in the waiting room. You know, this is a painstaking process. It takes time for you to go to the doctor and take all this time. Your kid can be getting solutions. Right. So imagine a time where you can just check your sick kid with an in-home diagnostic kit. Right. Telehealth. Sometimes you might not even need a doctor. You might just need a script. Your, your kid got strep throat. You're diagnosed right away. They send a script to your, your doctor, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry, not your doctor. Your local Walgreens, right? Have it delivered to your house right away. You might not even have to leave the house. So imagine the ease of healthcare at that point, right? So I think it makes it easier for everyone. And I don't think you're going to have to have insurance for some of these things, right? So right now, doctors won't see you because, you know, you taking up that time is a big deal. So if you're not taking up your time, you can pay a small fee to get diagnosed and a prescription sent to you, right? So I think it's going to make healthcare more affordable and democratize it for everybody. Everyone can live health healthy. Everyone can be seen very quickly. It's not going to change the times for emergency rooms like cuts and car uh, uh, car crashes and things like that. But your, your, your local regular things, your, your common cold, the flu, coronavirus, all of that stuff, I think is going to be solved very quickly and easily through in-home diagnostics. I think that's going to be a beautiful thing. That is, is going to change the world forever. Moving right along. Number two, nanotechnology. Now, this is another one where the possibilities are absolutely endless. So I'm just going to highlight some of the things that I thought was very fascinating. Um, they've been working on regenerative medicine um, and uh, bone tissue, right? So huh, regrowing bone, right? You can lose a leg and they're possibly going to be able to have you regrow that leg. I know it sounds unconscionable, but everything was unconscionable to happen. Imagine if this was a thousand years ago and somebody talked to you about flying. They would kill you. Right, it's, just, it's the same thing. Um, they're trying to re re regrow bone right now and make organs, artificial organs outside the body. So you're no longer ever going to have to wait soon enough. Never have to wait for a heart transplant, for a liver transplant, for a lung transplant. They're going to be able to make these organs using nanotechnology. And I think pretty soon, I'm not going to say pretty soon. I would imagine the next step would be to regrow these things inside your body. So if you have a degenerative disease in your kidneys or something like that, they're going to be able to inject you with, with nanotechnology and regrow those kidneys or regrow those lungs or regrow a, a pancreas at some point. Right now we're doing it outside the body, but I imagine at some point they're going to start doing it inside the body. Like I said, we're still at the dial-up stages of a lot of these things, but these things are very very fascinating and number one out of the top five technologies that is going to change the world Neuralink now Neuralink is headed up by Elon Musk who else right um, but I'm sure there's other companies that's working on things like this but what Elon wants to do is implant a basically a computer chip into your brain right that can control a computer they're starting out with you controlling either uh, you know the mouse cursor or a keyboard with just with just your mind you don't have to touch anything so they're trying to make the the communication between you and the computer seamless right and that's just the beginning stages of the thing right 
they eventually hope to um, have devices that can help out quadriplegics, paraplegics, put on machines on those quadriplegic and paraplegics. And just with their mind, if you think move my leg, just like you would think, you know, move your leg, the thing's going to move your leg for you. But eventually they want to make it so it restores your, the firing of those, those electrons in your brain so no one's ever paralyzed again. Uh, and I'm sure with the help of nanotechnology, all of this will become possible. But even further than that, you know we can't stop there, you know, dial up internet. This is how it goes. Even further than that, down the line, he wants it so that your bandwidth in your brain is increased. Meaning, if you want to read it, if you want to learn a language in an hour, boom, you know French in an hour. You know, you want to uh, learn an encyclopedia in a day, boom, you got all the information of an encyclopedia in a day. He, he, he intends to increase the bandwidth in your brain using computers. So, so the technology between your brain and the computer is seamless and the internet, the information you can download into yourself is going to be endless. I don't know how that's going to go. I don't know how I feel about it. I do love the idea of helping out paraplegics. I do, you know, uh, like the idea of curing Alzheimer's, things of that nature. But us being one with computers is kind of a scary future. It's more like science fiction. It's more like a lot of the movies we've seen. And I think we get these ideas from these movies from a real place. So <clears throat> our our transition into becoming, I don't know, even though symbiotic, you know, partners with machines are coming soon. I know it sounds crazy, but I think it's it's in the future here. But those were the top five things, top five technology I think are going to change the world. Thank you for joining me. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, turn on notifications, please. The channel is constantly growing. I appreciate everyone who takes time to listen and look. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're out of here.